future of Pierre-Luc Dubois, of course, a restricted free agent, two years remaining of team control, and a real priority to try to keep in the mix long term. The team's done a great job of inking Kyle Connor to a long-term deal. Nikolai Ehlers is, uh, you know, in the middle of a long-term deal as well. The hope was that Pierre-Luc Dubois would be the next guy to sign a long-term deal with the Winnipeg Jets. And, you know, at the end of the season, Pierre-Luc Dubois was asked about this and was very non-committal as to where things would be in a year or in two years when he would have to make that decision. And I think anyone would understand the advantage of a player going to unrestricted free agency and having the opportunity to pick where he's going to play for the majority of his career. And it's absolutely within his right. Uh, I think, you know, if you've looked at the situation, I mean, and it's no different than maybe any other team in the league, when you've got a top young player like this and you've got a certain limited amount of years, it is the onus is on the franchise to convince the player that this is a great home for him and that, you know, he'll be compensated fairly. And this will be, you know, the spot for him going forward. I would have to say that this is probably the worst time we're possible to be talking to Pierre-Luc Dubois about any sort of long-term extension, considering what we know about last season. Incredibly disappointing. Tons of turmoil within the team. A locker room that was, by many accounts, somewhat broken. And, you know, a, a very unhappy group of players coming out of the season. Um, I don't think anyone would blame someone for maybe taking their time as opposed to committing to that for eight years. Now, uh, let's hear the clip from Elliot Friedman. We'll talk a little bit more, but uh, I know this got a lot of tongues wagging and maybe some jaws dropped from Winnipeg Jet fans that, you know, thought this might be easy to get done. Here's Elliot, 32 thoughts on Pierre-Luc Dubois and the Winnipeg Jets. And the thing with Dubois, he's got two years to unrestricted free agency. I believe he plans to test it, and that's what he informed them in two years. Mm -hmm. I think the Jets are still hopeful that they can change his mind, and that is their plan. I don't want to put a handicap on it one way or the other, because one thing I've learned is two years is a long time. And to predict what's going to happen in two years is foolish. The other thing I know is this, is that Kevin Sheveldayoff hung on to Jacob Truba when there were a lot of rumors about what Trubo wanted to do, and he hung on to him until he absolutely had to trade him. I don't believe there's a trade request here from Dubois. I don't think he did that. I think he just said he's going to leave it open for a couple of years. But it'll be interesting to see if Sheveldayoff tries to show that there's reason to stay or he decides to make a move. He's been really patient. And like I said, the reaction I got, which is that the Jets hope Dubois will be a Jet for a long time, that says to me that at least they're considering the possibility of, can we make this work in a way that makes them happy? So there was uh, Elliot's report kind of expanding on what he had last night on HNIC and the Stanley Cup final broadcast on the 32 Thoughts podcast. And listen, it makes a lot of sense. Um, and as a number of commenters have already mentioned, I mean, the thought of him saying, oh, I'm 100% in, give me an eight-year deal, not even knowing who the next head coach is and how the team is going to look, I think is really unrealistic. So this is no surprise. Um, the onus is going to be on the Winnipeg Jets to, you know, make this situation, Pierre, Pierre-Luc Dubois, much better, to make the situation with the hockey team better, to make the team more competitive, and frankly, to make these guys enjoy being Winnipeg Jets more than I think most of them did last season. And I think a big part of that is internal. There's nothing to do with the city. I don't think it has anything to do with the fan base. I don't think it has anything to do with the weather. I think it has everything to do with what happened with this club, how fractured they looked at times last year, and the big, big job over the course of this offseason to get things together, to really put together a team that is cohesive as opposed to a divided locker room and being a part of it. So, listen, Dubois is going to have every opportunity to make himself a lot of money He'll be leaned on this season, regardless of what his contract looks like, if it's a one-year deal, if it's a two-year deal, and the onus will be on the Winnipeg Jets to get this done. Um, you know, unlike Mark Shifley, though, I mean, the Shifley's got one more year of the deal, and, you know, you can't sign an extension. There's, there's Talks won't even be able to officially start until July 1st of next season. There would be the possibility that, you know, Dubois could sign right now. We obviously know that from all reports, there's, we're not looking at some long-term deal this year. So it makes next season, Reem, 
absolutely in so many ways make or break for the club because i think that if they know that there's a possibility that in two years they'll be without mark shifley and without pierre luke dubois um you know that's a that's a crazy change in, in the middle of maybe the most important position on the ice outside of goaltender oh and by the way connor hellebuck has two years left on his deal so this next year who the head coach is how the team can bounce back uh, I think it's setting up for the most pivotal and interesting offseason we've had since this team came back here. And a year coming up, dude, that, you know, could go many different ways, as could this roster. Um, I think everyone would love to see the team get back to being really competitive and, you know, hopefully fill a few holes and, you know, be a team that is in the playoffs and playing at this time of the year next year. If it doesn't go that way, though, um, as Elliot said, and you don't believe that you're going to be able to sign these guys, we could be talking about some more very, very significant trades over the course of the next little while. Because the one thing that you can't do is lose these guys for nothing. They traded Patrick freaking Line to get Pierre-Luc Dubois. I said at the time, if they weren't able to get Dubois at some point signed to a long-term deal, it would be an abject fail for the organization. I still sort of believe that. However... Shevelyev's done it before, and if he is forced into a corner and has to trade him, finding the right deal at the right time will be imperative. But uh, holy smokes. I mean, as you said, the head coaching thing is almost on the back burner right now, although it really is the first thing that needs to happen with everything else that's happened around this club and these yeah. reports in the last few days. Okay, I got an idea. Someone suggested this in chat, Hus. How about we offer Pierre Luc Dubois free beer for life? <laughs> oh wait no. sorry we already we already no, did no, that no. one that was last i'm already week. working i'm already working on it okay already talking okay. to the people at home depot yeah we're gonna be we we know plt's a big big home <laughs> depot guy so uh listen when we need to put the mariano rivera hat and come out of the bullpen yeah. with the well, uh, with the final offer it will have something to do with uh a large home depot gift card and uh maybe some other services we can do for the uh, home improvements that the Dubois seem to love doing reportedly. In all seriousness, uh, my reaction to the, I mean, disappointing to hear that he doesn't want to, or that he's told them that he wants to go to UFA. But if you're a player, I can see why he's 23 years old because he came into the league as a 19 year old. He can get to UFA, you know, a bit sooner than maybe someone who came in at, at 21 where usually you're, you know, still you're cut kind of on the start of the downside of the career. So he could get a big payday. The salary cap is going to be going up in two years, so you'd be able to get more money. And, of course, the state of the team, why would you want to – they don't even have a coach right now. Why would you commit long-term when you really don't know what you're getting into? But I do agree with Elliot what he said that, look, two years is a long time. Big time. If they, if they can come in and have a good season this year and you know make him an offer – that he thinks is fair in terms of what is paid. Because I think part of the issue with Columbus was, you know, they kind of, Columbus likes to play a bit hardball with contracts, and he want, was looking to get big payday. So if he plays well and they offer him what he's worth, I think when you have like an $80 million contract in front of you for long term, that's really hard to turn down. So as you agree, this year is definitely huge. Can, you know, the expectations that Calgary set last year going from, you know, miserable season, below expectations to winning the division. I don't know if the Jets can pull that off. I think they'd have to get back into the playoffs. That would be a success. They're going to need Dubois. I'm going to need Chafley. Someone suggested in our YouTube comments, shout out to the comments, that, you know, could they trade Dubois and Chafley in the same offseason? I don't, I don't think you could do that. That's, that's too much. Don't forget, folks, hit that red subscribe button. Make sure you're joining us daily here on Winnipeg Sports Talk. Do a favor. Do us a favor. Tell a friend about us. Still is funny how more and more people are finding out what we're doing here each and every day. Too much turnover. Well, but listen, is, is it that could something? happen. It, it could happen. And, and, you know, Jeff Merrick had an interesting comment from their interview with Kevin Sheveldayoff at the Combine. You know, he said that, you know, he was talking a lot about Cole Perfetti and Billy Haina really focusing on the young players in this team. And, you know, with assets like that, there will, there could be and will be a time at some point, and I'm not saying this is this year or next year, that, you know, we see a bit of a recalibration of the roster where the team does go young. The team already has two first-round selections this year. There's plenty of other possibilities that could happen where, you know, you're getting some, you know, better prospects or potentially trading players like that for, 
you know, more blue chip players on potentially on ELCs, which again, sort of moves the clock ahead. Um, but what does that do for you in the short term? I really do believe it's important for this team. I know there's lots of people say, blow it up, blow it up. I Listen, I don't think there's any appetite right now within True North Sports and Entertainment to do that. I think they believe, and I believe, that there's too much talent on this team to, you know, put a nuke in the dressing room and completely blow it up and turn it over. But at the same time, the pressure is definitely going to be on to improve the atmosphere around the team, to improve the performance of the team. Um, and I think that, that, that in itself will improve the feeling in and around the fan base. And I think that makes them, it puts them in a much better situation to sign players long term. Guys, last year was miserable. It was a disappointment. They still don't have a new head coach. There's been no answers to any of the questions coming out of the end of the season. So does anyone think that things would have changed and all of a sudden, you know, a player like Dubois with as much leverage as he had would just be signing up? Yeah, give me a contract. I'm signing it for eight years. No. So I try not to overreact. Listen, would you like to hear different news? Absolutely. But we need to live in reality right now. And considering the season the Jets had last year, there's a lot of work to be done. And that work is going to be done. We're going to begin the first day of training camp under the new head coach. I know damn well Mark Pierre-Luc Dubois is going to be a big, big part of this team. And if he can have some great success continuing to play with Kyle Connor, if the team can win, if the team can be competitive, if there's a bright future going forward, if there's a better atmosphere around the club, you'll have a hell of a lot better chance to have a player like Dubois consider staying here long term. Right now, that ain't happening. I'm not surprised. I don't want to overreact to it. And, uh, you know, again, it's just something that we'll be talking about throughout this offseason. Uh, but if I'm Dubois, I'm not even considering jumping on anything long term until I see where this team is going. Essentially, what Mark Shifley said at the end of last year, which many of us took as sort of strange for a guy that was the leader of the team and was signed for two years. It's legit coming from Pierre-Luc Dubois. Yeah, he's an RFA. He's got arbitration rights. I'm curious how that's going to go. Are we going to be on arbitration hearing watch I, when the I, dates come out? I doubt it. I doubt it. I, I don't think. I mean, if they know that this, you know, they're not talking about a long-term deal. They're looking to kick the can down the road for one season. Mm -hmm. I think they get together with, I believe, Pat Brisson is his agent. Yep. Um, and work out a one-year deal like has happened on a number of other occasions. And then as the season goes on, you know, look at the situation and hopefully it's a much better one for a guy like Dubois to consider being here long term. And next year, if they know that that ain't happening, then you probably do have to trade the player. Uh, I know there'd be a lot of interest in Pierre-Luc Dubois and the return would be great. But again, when you're trading a player like that in the prime of his career, much like many people's, you know, aversion to moving Mark Shifley right now. It's very difficult to win that trade immediately, but we have seen a number of trades, you know, that work out well long term for the club, and it just depends on where you are as far as that, um, um, where you are in the process of uh, being a real contending team. The Jets thought they were there a couple of years ago. They've obviously taken a step back, and in a lot of ways, this is the crossroads for the team and for many players over the course of the next twelve months. Yeah, I agree, and we'll have to wait and see what happens uh, with the coach. You know. We haven't even mentioned uh, any any meetings or anything coming on. I think that's step one. And, you know, step two, I mean, how the team does. If you win, you know, people want to stay. I mean, no one was really talking about this uh, back in, in 2018. So, again, I don't I agree with you. I don't blame Dubois for wanting to take a wait-and-see approach, just how the salary cap has been because of the, you know, lost revenues from the pandemic, but also the state of the team. And if you win, cures everything, and we'll see – how it goes, and maybe you can have a great season and think, hey, you know what, I, I like it here. But uh, it was definitely um, upsetting seeing that, if you're a Jets fan, seeing that during, you know, you're trying to watch the Stanley Cup final, watch some great hockey, and you get that bomb. Uh, th thanks, Elliot, for, the for timing, that one. The timing of it was quite interesting, I will say that. And I'm not sure, you know, whether that was just brought forth to Elliot or whether the agent and he were in conversations and he got that, but... Yeah, the timing did raise a few eyebrows. Uh, but again, first things first for the Jets, figure out who the head coach is and move forward.